Good afternoon and welcome sa ating OBS Online Bible Study. And we are now on our 5th session and we will be discussing this time the Gospel of Luke. Um, I would like to tell you, friends and brethren, that we have our lessons, past lessons can now be accessed through YouTube. Just type Brother Ronnie Cariaga. And then uh, Cynthia asks you to just subscribe and share. Thank you so much. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, we would like to hear. I would like to thank those who have called me earlier. Uh, I'd like to appreciate also those who have texted me and who have emailed me and sent some messages. Thank you so much for the encouraging words. May the Lord continue to bless us, continue to bless this ministry, even, even, and hopefully so, the COVID-19 will soon be over. Let's go over to our lesson, and this is now the book of Luke. The Gospel of Luke. See, let's start with the author of the Gospel of Luke. Luke wrote his Gospel and in writing this gospel, there was no mention of his name whatsoever in the gospel nor in the book of Acts. So how did they determine that it was Luke who is the author of the third gospel? So by process of elimination and aside from the tradition, by process of elimination, the Bible scholars or those who were ahead of us learned that the book of Acts and this particular gospel, the third gospel, which has no name first, is both addressed to one and only person, to Theophilus. Now, there is some part in the book of Acts wherein it was called the weak section, meaning the author was with Paul. And the author was in the company of those who are in the book of Acts. Process of elimination. In the we section also, we found out later that Luke was there. So, because in one of the books, one of the epistles of Paul, he made mention about our dear friend Luke. Who is a physician? So that was mentioned. The other one also is in Philip, uh, Philemon chapter 24, wherein he called Luke to be a fellow worker. Thus, making it then, making it by process of elimination again, that the we, part of the we section then, can be attributed to Luke. And being backed up by early church traditions. So it was ascertained later that it was indeed Luke the physician who wrote the fourth gospel. And what we know about him, that he is gentle by birth. And that again, let me just go back to what I have said earlier, that he is a physician. So it must be from Antioch of Syria or from Philippi. Having said that, let us go over to the date and place of writing. Why do we need to ascertain the date and place of writing? Because of the hypothesis that we have uh, studied when we first took the, the synoptic gospels. So we could say that it is in between 59 to 63 AD, basing if he took some from Mark or from the Quill document or according to him from his own research. Okay? And the place could probably be, the place of writing could probably be Rome, but some of the Bible scholars are not taking out Achaia or Ephesus and Caesarea Philippi for that matter. The recipient being Theophilos. Name which means one who loves God. 
there were those who thought that Theophilos is anyone who loves God, any person who loves God, can be the recipient or the receiver of the third gospel. But because of the title, Most Excellent Theophilos, so it suggests a person, an individual, a Roman officer for that matter, and it could be that he could be the patron for the Gospels writing and for the Gospels propagation also. So we could put it at that and we are ascertained that it is indeed Theophilos, one who loves God. The purpose of the book is outlined in chapter 1 verses 1 down through 4 and we will be reading that for now so that we can see what is the purpose of the third gospel okay let's open up our bibles in luke chapter 1 verses 1 down to 4 and this is what is in there luke wrote in as much as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that have been accomplished among us so luke is telling theophilus many have undertaken not discounting Mark, not discounting another gospel that is earlier than what we believe that there are some, or the oral tradition that is going on, that is being passed from one generation to another. So, in as much as many have undertaken to compile a narrative, it's a narrative, it's a story of the things that have been accomplished among us, Luke said, just as those who were from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministries of the word. So, two things. Luke says, others are eyewitnesses. Okay? So, you could make mention of Matthew. Matthew was an eyewitness. Peter was an eyewitness. And it could be that Mark was an eyewitness also. And some others. Ministers of the word, oral tradition. They were they were telling this. They were they were just passing the things that they've learned. Those things have been delivered to them, including Luke and Theophilus, have been delivered them to us. It seemed good to me also. This is what Luke thinks of. It is good for me also having followed all things closely for some time past meaning i have studied i have researched these things i've been following these things i've been following this tradition these oral traditions i've been reading these things i've been looking at those things and he said it seemed to me good to me that i should write you an orderly account for you most excellent theophilus Verse 4, that you may have, and here it is, certainty concerning the things you have been taught. Certainty concerning the things you have been taught. If verse 4 will be taken as the purpose of writing for Luke, that you may have certainty concerning the things you have been taught. So we wonder, and you too need to be asking, what should I be certain of concerning the gospel? What are the things that I need to be certain of or are certain of? Ano ano yung mga bagay-bagay na kailangan check akong totoong nangyari? Okay? What are those things? Those things that have been mentioned in the gospels, in Mark and in Matthew. Come to think of it, I need to be ascertain, is Jesus really the Son of God? That I need to know. Second, if He is the Son of God, how was it? How did it come into being? So you're questioning about the virgin birth. Is He really a product of a virgin birth? So that's the next one. 
The third one would be Jesus. Is he really a savior? Savior for all humanity? Savior for the Jews? Or for the Gentiles also? Is he really a savior? That would put me in there because I know I am a Gentile. But I need to know. Might be that I am claiming that he's my savior and he is only a savior among or for the Jews. So that's that that's one thing I need to be ascertained of. The next one, if he is God and the Savior, is he a friend of sinners? That would be very, very interesting for me. Me being a sinner and he being God, holy. Could we be friends? His crucifixion. Was he really crucified? Were there eyewitnesses during his crucifixion? Were there some basis? Could we at least ascertain that he was indeed crucified? Or was it just a story? Next one. Resurrection. Without resurrection, then we're still on our sins, in our sins. I need to ascertain that. I need to be certain of that. That Jesus indeed rose from the dead. Ascension. If it could be proven that indeed he ascended, that he came from God as being the Son of God, and then he ascended, then that makes sense. That will give credence to the gospel that he is indeed the Son of God. Commission. Did he really tell those apostles of his? To go and preach? Did he really tell those apostles, those disciples, to disciple others? Because if he did not, then I may be following, following a wrong guy. So those things are, I need to be ascertained. And if that will be the things that will be seen that I could read in the book of Luke or in the Gospel of Luke, then at least being Theophilus, being a man, a Roman officer, a man of noble character to be, just to be saying that, or a man of reputable character, believing on things like this. So somebody would be questioning his position. But if it could be ascertained this way, then he could walk with his chin held high, okay, so to speak. So those are the things I want to ascertain with if I will be in the, in the shoes of Theophilus. Now let's look over at the characteristics of the book of the Gospel of, the, of, of Luke. One, the universality. The recognition of Gentiles as well as Jews in God's plan of salvation. See, Matthew, in tracing the genealogy of Jesus, he traced it back to Abraham because the Jews considered Abraham is their great-great-grandfather. Luke made it universal. He traced it back to God. Not only to Adam, but to God. Okay, next one. Emphasis on prayer. The Gospel of Luke showed the importance of prayer. There's the verse, chapter 3, verse 21. Whenever Christ is making a great decision, he always go for prayer. The, the joy at the announcement of the Gospel. Ah! That's one, and it rings throughout the gospel, throughout the entire book. 
special concern for the role of women. For those who thought that in a patriarchal society that women are not given much attention, we will be dealing with this and I'll be showing you that Jesus acknowledged through the writings of Luke the power of women, the role of women, and how they help in the ministry of Jesus. The special interest in the poor, um, chapter 19 verse 10, that is the key verse for, for Luke, and we'll be going to that. The concern for sinners, a lot. It has been shown by, by uh, Luke. So Luke must have had researched a lot of this because he put it there. His stress on the family circle. He talks about that. He talks about relationships, family relationships. And then his use of the title Son of Man. Not Son of God, but Son of Man. He, he used that. Emphasis on the Holy Spirit. Last but not least, that the gospel was complete from birth to ascension. Birth, incarnation, and then ascension. Those are the characteristics of the Gospel of Luke. Key verse, as I've said earlier, chapter 19, verse 10, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. That will be our key verse while studying the book of Luke. Oh, his style. They said, it's outstanding command in Greek, and uh, his vocabulary is extensive and rich. And I remember while I was teaching, still teaching in, in the Bible school, my students always remember whenever we take Luke and ask the bipolar reversal style of writing for Luke. That is, in Luke. And we will be taking some um, examples of this. Bipolar reversal were in the north becomes south and the south becomes north. And that's that's one style of, of Dr. Luke in his writing. And it will give color to the things that we will be reading when we know He's got this style of writing also, bipolar reversal, where norms are reversed. So let's start, and we start with verse 5, chapter 1, verse 5. I still got uh, some time. So let's start with our study in, in the book of Luke. Sometimes whenever I, I read the book of Luke, I can't help but smile a bit. Um, I could see some funny situations and in teaching it I uh, I try to infuse that if the students could see it also so let's try to do that hopefully it works with uh, with you there and with me here it works when it is in a classroom setting I don't know if in a live stream or in a recorded Thing like this if it works or not let's start with verse 5 in the days of Herod king of Judea there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Baijah and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth so based from this we know that Zechariah and Elizabeth are from the tribe of Levi because they are from a priestly tribe and they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and the statutes of the Lord. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years. Sorry about that. Okay. So, they were both advanced in years and these old priests 
must have been praying for all those years for a son. And so does Elizabeth. Verse 8, Now while he was serving as a priest before God, when his division was on duty, it was their time to be the one performing at the temple. According to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. So it was his time. It was his call of duty. So he was there, there to burn incense. Okay? And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Picture up in your mind with me. Imagine with me. He's been doing this. This old priest been burning incense. Whenever his time, whenever he has this duty to do these things, he had been doing this thing for years. Routine. So probably they just put this here and then just burn it and then done. But this particular time, while he was doing this, there appeared to him an angel standing at the right side of the altar. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. What would that be? An old priest? Troubled seeing an angel? The book of Malachi was written around 430, 432 BC. And after the, the last prophet, Malachi, from 432 BC up to this time, 64 for BC, for the past 430 years, it was called intertestamental period. It was silent years. There were no recorded appearance of angels. There were no recorded prophets. No recorded visions from God. No record whatsoever. It was totally silent. And they, just like us now, after 2,000 years, haven't seen an angel. What if one of these days an angel will just appear here? I, I may be running out of my house. So this old priest was doing his duty and an angel appeared to him and he was so afraid. But the angel told him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Listen, your prayer has been heard. What? He's been praying for a son. He and his wife, Elizabeth. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. He must be frozen to death. And in his old age, he will have a son. Mm. <laughs> Rings. Isaac, Rebecca. And you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. Look at those things. Look at the description of, of the angel for uh, Zechariah, for the birth of his son. For he will be great before the Lord, and he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. That is why it is called Nazirite. There will be no drink, no strong drink, even at the mother's womb. That is why his diet, as Matthew would put it, um, locusts and honey. 
and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. Elijah the prophet. Zealous prophet. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready for the Lord a people prepared. Forerunner. Rightly so. He will be the forerunner. He will prepare the way of the Lord. He will be ahead of the Lord. Of the coming of the great one. And Zechariah said to the angel, Listen, this old priest who knows his scriptures, these old priests who has been there doing his routine, even asked the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. The priest is gone practical. How shall I know this? I'm an old man, been praying for the longest time. Has it been answered? And now you're telling me my prayers are being heard? The next one. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and able to speak until the day that these things take place because you did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their time. When blessings become curses, he has been praying for a son and now that the prayer is being answered. He won't be able to speak because of that unbelief. And the people were waiting for Zechariah. And they were wondering his delay in the temple. And when he came out, voila! He was unable to speak to them and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple and he kept making signs to them and remained mute. <laughs> Probably are saying, he went in, he could speak, for he went in, coming out, he could no longer speak and he just made signs. How long was that last? Nine months. Let's move on. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. How did he explain that to Elizabeth? After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. And for five months, she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. So that is one part about the forerunner, about the birth of John the baptizer. Excitement is there. Um, Zechariah being mute. I, I don't know how, how hard was it for, for Zechariah. Um, Watching Elizabeth, watching as the belly, the bulls get bigger, and he could not say anything because of his unbelief. I wondered what was in his mind, thinking, I've been a priest, I've been teaching this and that, and then when it came to me, I didn't believe it. Twenty-six. In the sixth month, meaning in the sixth month, from the time that Elizabeth conceived, that will be the timeline that is being followed here. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. There it is. Mary could probably be around 15.
want to be certain with the virgin birth? Here it is, as Luke would put it. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. Listen, the first was an old priest serving at the temple for all his life. And here is a 15-year-old virgin. When the old priest, when Gabriel appeared to him, he was frozen to death. Here is Mary, when he appeared to Mary, let's look at this and compare, contrast these two later. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have favor, found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. It's almost the same, right? When Gabriel said, your prayers have been heard. You will have a son and you will call his name John. And Zechariah said, How can that be? I'm an old man and my wife is old. So this young virgin, this 15 year old, when she was told that she will be conceived and bear a son, and she will call him Jesus. And then verse 32, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, Son of God, Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. Wow! Every royalty in Israel been waiting that every child born in the palace, every child born among the royals, they are hoping that that is the Messiah, that is the promised one, the deliverer, the heir of the throne of David. It's here. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. An eternal kingdom. And Mary said to the angel, the same. If Zechariah asked, how will this be? I am an old man. Mary got the same answer. Mary said, how will this be? Since I am a virgin. In some other translation, I knew no man. And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived the son and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Two. Old priests and a virgin. The same thing. You will have a son. You will bear a son. The same thing. You will call him John. You will call him Jesus. The same question. How will this be? But why was it that Zechariah was punished and Mary was not? How was it that Zechariah became mute and Mary rejoiced? Here is what it is. Verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. On the part of Mary, she said, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. 
what happens happens what will happen happen with Zechariah it seems like I mean this old and he can believe that I've been in this service for a long time and he can believe that you angel where are your wings no um, things like that that's why I, I said sometimes it gets a little bit funny when when you look at Zechariah's answer so after that let's let, let me just go back a little bit uh, there it is your relative Elizabeth so it could be that Mary came from the tribe of Levi because she is being considered a relative of Elizabeth. Let's move on. In those days, Mary arose and went haste into the hill country, into a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby lived in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Mother of my Lord should come to me. For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. That's the joy of announcing the good news. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord indirectly in verse 45 blessed is she you're more blessed than okay who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord Mary accepted it Zechariah did not believe it at first so here is now the Magnificat Mary's song of praise. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble state of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown his strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty mighty being brought down and exalted the humble a clue of your bipolar reversal he has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of the humble state he has filled the hungry with good things again hungry with good things and the rich has sent away empty the poor been filled the hungry been filled the rich went away empty he has helped his servants israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers to abraham and to his offspring forever and mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home consider this mary when she was approached by gabriel Elizabeth was already six months pregnant and Mary stayed there for another three months so that is nine months had Mary waited a little bit longer he could have seen she could have seen the birth of John but it says she returned to her home after three months of stay with Elizabeth and with Zechariah. Here's now the birth of John the Baptist. Let's just reserve this for next week. I will be dealing with the birth of John the Baptist next week. I will be dealing also with the birth of the Messiah, of Jesus, next week. And we will be covering some samples of the bipolar reversal, as I have promised. And we'll be dealing some of this. So sorry, I, I didn't... Uh, notice my time is up okay thank you so much for being in this session again I'll be seeing you next session thank you for being here God bless